Guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to fix a point that has been pulled in correctly. Uh, you can see here the occupancy schedule point uh, has come in as an analog value. One thing you want to do is to look to see exactly what type of point this is. You can see here it is an ADI and as well as the point address. Now where you will typically see this type of an issue happen is if you have replaced an N2 device with a newer generation device and then flip the communication and then use the PRN file to pull all of the points in. Uh, that is something that can happen, uh, you know, and what we can do is instead of leaving it in an analog value, there is a way that you can correct this issue uh, with the way that technology is going. Uh, we know that a lot of the Intu devices are no longer being used. However, there are many of them that are still out there. There's a lot of uh, what I'm doing here is actually just going to copy this because the way that we do this is we're going to have to blow this point out and then pull it in manually. So uh, and that what what that will do is give us a little bit of flexibility on uh, getting things uh, corrected the way that we want them to be. So I'm simply going to do locate in tree and I'm going to of course uh, delete the point and then I'm going to go to insert uh, the point again and I'm going to simply select the manual insertion instead of using the PRN file. Of course this is going to be an MO, a mode of operation point is what I need to select. I then in this screen here I select the particular point that we had you know on a previous screen under the hardware tab. I want to make sure that I select the correct object within the programming to pull that point from. So I have that selected. That's why you want to make sure that you enter the correct information there. And this is where I'm just going to paste in that name that I previously corrected uh, or previously copied. And then once I do that, I simply hit next. And it's going to give me the configure window. From here, I can change my state text. There are a lot of different options out there, so you are going to need to filter through these to get the exact point uh, text that you need to make this uh, operation smooth for you. As you can see, there are a significant number of uh, you know of, cho of choices of options here and this method is the same for a lot of different uh, control points that you want to pull in again if they get pulled in incorrectly using the PRN file you can go in and correct them and that's what had uh, happened here this was a VMA 1420 that had failed we replaced this device with a VMA 1630 and then simply changed the communication on the 1630 from BACnet to N2. And of course, when I wrote the program for this device, I did create the PRN file to be able to pull the points in. And of course, we use that initially to get those points uh, pulled into the system. But of course, it was uh, it did not pull it in the way that we hoped. But it was something we knew would happen because of previous experience with doing this. But now uh, we want to make sure that we get it corrected, and this is how we would correct it. Again, guys, you can see that there is a significant number of these points within the system that you can name that but for this particular point uh, the one that we will need is going to be the occupancy mode for states and you can click uh, the little icon out to the side and you can actually do a search to kind of help narrow down your results now from this list here you can kind of see the numeric value of each of these state text and you know if you've seen previously uh, the text on that point was a numeric value and what we're going to be doing here is simply drilling down and finding what we want uh, that will match the pneumatic uh, numeric value of the program and that way our state text instead of it staying 
you know, one, two, or three for occupancy or whatever, it will actually give us a name. And that way it is much neater, it is much cleaner when you're going through doing troubleshooting, when you're going through your system. And depending on the controller, depending on the control point, you may not know what that value is. You may not know that three means unoccupied or whether it means occupied or no schedule. I mean, there's just a whole wide range of points in this system, as you can see. And what we want to do is basically try to simplify our jobs by having it to basically tell us what it's doing. And that's where doing this and correcting these points and making them say what they are is something that is worth taking the extra time to do. Uh, it, when you go forward, once you get away from working on one device, if you find yourself working on another, and then over a period of time, for whatever reason, if you have to come back to this particular device, you may not remember exactly what that value is supposed to represent. Now, you can add notes and things like that, but taking just a few extra minutes and correcting the state text makes it much simpler. And you can see here that we now have the correct state text selected. Now when I hit next, of course this is going to be the review screen, it's going to give me the option for trends and that sort of thing. And now I'm going to double click this point or double click the box again and you can see initially it comes in offline and there is our state text. Now I want to show you something here. When I go to change it to occupied, it gives me this error. It says point is under local control. Now the way that I can change that is simply go into uh, view that point, go into the options tab and then select local control and set it to false. And then when I hit save, I can go back and then I can actually just do a normal command on that point and it makes it much easier. Now of course you see the zone temp and warmer cooler adjust on this is currently offline. Uh, we had to replace the thermostat as well and had not gotten that done at this point. But that is a uh, another thing that you want to uh, note when you do this. Uh, pulling in those points with the PRN file, I've already got it cleaned up now, but the minimum and maximum values on your flow set points and things like that may come in showing unreliable, and that is because of the way those points are configured as well, the min and max values of those. You can just simply change that minimum and maximum value, and it will, uh, or it should, I should say, it should bring those back to reliable. Now, you know, if that is a set point showing out of range. Something else that you need to remember to do when you replace a, uh, an older device with a newer generation device, you're going to have to go through your schedules, you're going to have to go through your logic. Uh, if you're using any kind of logic that is manipulating that particular device, and you are going to have to reconfigure that. It's not going to necessarily pull all those connections back into where you think they should be. You can see here that the particular occupancy point for that box, the original box in the schedule, is now out of range. If uh, you know, it's just it can't recognize it because it was a completely different device, it, even though the address was the same. That point, that instance ID, all of that, that's completely different. And the system is not going to automatically recognize it. So you're going to need to go through your schedules. You're going to need to go through any kind of logic that you have and make the corrections and rebind all of that. You know, we, of course, we're using a lot of the optimum start. Of course, we're using schedules and we're using a lot of features of the system that have a lot of uh, connections and you know a lot of logic connections and things like that so what i'm doing now is simply adding that control point back into the schedule fortunately this box is one that would pull in and would manipulate properly but you can have problems with some schedules depending on the group you can see there where we come into it showing busy binding and the reason it was showing that on this particular scheduled items list is because that was the original VAV so we have to remove it and then we save it and now our point is tied with the schedule it is back in where it needs to be and we are putting this back in operation but guys, I hope that this is 
uh, something that is helpful to you. I hope that it is something that can help you get some of your devices pulled in, get some of your control points pulled in. But guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, let me know down in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out the rest of the videos on the channel. Be sure to visit my website at systemcontroltech.net. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.